Hi there, this is Alana from the Red Angus Association. I work in the DNA department. We have put together a really informative video. I hope you find it informative anyway. Um, it's our frequently asked questions, and this was put together by Halla, who oversees the DNA department, Fallon, who is basically the coordinator, and myself. So to kick us off here, um, one of our biggest questions is how do I add a registration number to my DNA results? So if you received an email back from us with those DNA results, what we need you to do is put the registration number in the registration column for us. Okay, and then you're going to need to email that back. Um, if you received it in paper form, please write it in and send it back to us, or you can fax it in to us. We just need to know that, hey, this animal that you've designated as 101 is actually this registration number, okay? Um, this isn't something that you can do yourself, so you're going to have to make sure that you contact us to get this added. Um, I get a lot of questions about, hey, I know I submitted a sample on this 101 animal. Um, why isn't it showing you reds grow? Well, generally, this is because it was submitted without a reg number, and we just need to get that connected. Okay, it could just be very simple as that. So if you think you submitted DNA, please make sure you're responding back and getting those reg numbers updated so we can ensure that it's getting connected for you. So, do I have to card the hair? Can I just put it in an envelope? No. Please, please, please card your hair, okay? Um, I understand that some of you like to take advantage in having the hair cards. Um, it's easier to use from you, although this isn't one of our preferred methods. Um, I just want to reach out to you folks and just let you know if, if you're sending hair to us in an envelope, it is up to a $25 per card fee for us to card the hair for you, okay? $25, so if you had 50 samples, that's gonna add up pretty quick. So I want you to have to, I want you to avoid that. Um, sometimes your vet has some hair cards. We can test the clarified cards. It doesn't have to necessarily be a gene C card, but we need to make sure that it's carded. I see folks who also put hair on a blood card and the lab will not test that. They'll reject it right off the bat. And um, it, it just doesn't allow for the flow of our DNA department very well. So please make sure if you have hair, you're putting it on a hair card. Also, there's a $5 hair processing fee. It's not $4, it's $5 now. Um, that went up, I believe, last year in January. Um, so if you're running a parentage test on an animal, that's $15, and if it's a hair card, then you need to add five, so that's $20 per sample. Um, for you folks out there who are using hair cards, have you thought about switching the blood or the TSUs, the tissue sampling units? Um, these are some really great ways to test your animals, especially the TSUs. It kind of works like a tagging gun. If you have questions on how that kind of looks, we launched an awesome video. And it's a live video of us collecting all the different sample types. So you might want to check it out and see if maybe one of those options might be better for you. Um, blood and TSUs flow through the lab a lot quicker, generally, um, just because it's an easier sampling method. Literally, for the hair cards, they have to punch out each follicle by hand. And that usually takes up a good portion of the time. So how do I get papers after DNA? So once you receive the results back, please make sure that the results have posted in Reds Pro. I'm going to cover that a little bit more on a later slide. Um, but once they've posted in there, then you can print the certificate. I'm really happy to see you guys wanting certificates with the DNA on there. That's awesome. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's gonna be kind of in your lower right-hand column. You'll see individual, sire, and dam. The individual is the one that you're looking at for those DNA results. Um, and then you'll have what the sire got on his and if he has any defects that he got tested for and as well for the dam. What does the DNA display, in, or when does the DNA display in Reds Pro? And what about my EPDs? I totally love your guys' enthusiasm about wanting to see everything displayed in there. Um, so I kind of wanted to cover this for you. Um, so we load DNA at the beginning of the week. So let's say you receive your results on Wednesday. Okay, they're not going to be reflected until Monday. All right, because we do it once a week. Now, if you have calves or animals that are on hold, maybe you had a defect, you had to test on a donor dam, or you need parentage on the sire to get calves off a of hold, what you're going to have to do for that is you're gonna see those results load in. Let's say you're gonna see it on Monday, you're gonna to have to wait for it overnight, and this will see it on Tuesday. The system has to go back through its checks and balances overnight, and so that's when you're gonna see those animals come off of hold. Okay, so don't freak out, say, oh my gosh, I put the DNA in there, and now it's still showing all the calves on hold. Let it go through it overnight, 
And then if you have questions or there's an issue the next day, please feel free to give us a call. Now, we're gonna go into the EPD analysis. Um, one thing I wanna tell you guys is please factor this in when you're submitting animals for your sale. Okay, just because your sale's on the 15th and the DNA got done, you know, on the 14th, doesn't mean it's gonna have your updated EPDs, and here's why. The analysis has to run for one week, that's seven total days, okay, to calculate your EPDs. So if you get your results back on Wednesday, the bolt analysis won't pick it up until Monday. It'll have to run for an entire week, guys, seven full days, and then it will be updated on Tuesday, okay? So make sure if you're doing genomic enhanced deals that you're leaving plenty of time for the bolt analysis to pick up those and give you your most accurate, most up-to-date EPDs for your sales, okay? If you have questions on if that animal's gonna make that, um, we can try to help you out and give us, give you the best um, estimated of time um, that we can, okay? What about sire groups? So we've had a lot of issues recently with this, and so that's why I wanna put this slide together. We're kind of changing some things up with it. So if you are submitting an order, and you're referencing a sire group, whether that's sires 2019, sire group one, sire group A, make sure that you're filling out the multi-sire group form, okay? That's located on page five of your DNA order form. If you need that form, let us know. I will send it to you. I'm happy to do so. Um, kind of what we're changing up is that if you submit 10 plus non-registered animals without sire options or a completed multi-sire group form, your DNA samples will not be sent to the lab, okay? We need that sire information. And we've had too many issues with trying to get everything added on the backside. And so now we're going to be requiring that upfront because this allows for efficiency for the DNA department, okay? One thing I wanna tell you folks is, we get a lot of folks that say, well, why can't you just run this animal? You know, why didn't you just add this sire, you know, when you didn't list any sire options, okay? We don't know what you bred to. As much as we would love to know everything that's going on with your operation to try to help you the best we can, we don't know. So the more information you provide to us, the better it is. So if you have sire, you know, like five sire options, make sure you get those to us. So that way we can compare them and then send those results out to you as quickly as possible instead of saying, hey, do you have another option? Okay, it wasn't that one. Do you have another option? You know, if there's five possible sires, make sure you're listing them. Okay, another situation what I try to tell folks when they call me and ask about it is like maybe sire C that's in your, um, your active bull inventory was never an option for 101 anyway. So please make sure you're being very specific about the sires and which sires went to which calves, all right? Now on to how can I pay for the DNA. You have three options. You can mail a check with the order. You can write call for payment um, on the payment line. Or if you prepay over the phone with a credit card, make sure you just write paid over phone with card. Um, or we can post the balance into the Reds Pro account for you. Make sure you let us know if you take advantage of option three because we're going to have to physically go in there and post that payment for you. This next slide I get a ton of questions on, so I want to cover this as in depth as I can and try to answer all the questions I received recently on this. Um, so what does the parentage test cover? Basically, this is required for all sires and all donor dams, okay? Just right off the bat, all sires, all donor dams. So this allows calves to be registered out of them, so you know you need to have DNA on file for your sire. So that way we can get those calves registered for you and not on hold. Um, I get a lot of people who say, I just need DNA on file for this animal. What do I need to mark? That's going to be your parentage test. Um, you know, I get folks who say, well, you know, there was three other sires. I don't know what sire. What do I need to mark for this calf? It's going to be the parentage test. Okay, this is generally the test, probably our most used test for those um, kind of situations. This is also a test that we don't require a registration number for, although we highly encourage it. So maybe you have a calf and you know the dam, but you don't know which of the three sires it was, please let us know. We'll let you know how to get that into the system and get a reg number connected to it, just so this ensures that the DNA is being reflected for that animal. What do I mark for a GGP? So to kind of line this out for you, if you're running an LD, you only have to mark the LD column. You don't have to write in parentage, you don't have to write OS and MA, because all of that's included in the LD panel. Now, if you wanted to add DD to your LD, 
you're going to need to write that in the genetic defect column because that's not included with the LD. Okay, so if you're running the LD, you just have to mark the LD column. You don't have to mark OSMA or parentage because it's included. But if you need a different defect um, or you're running BVD, then you need to mark those because that's not included. Now, if you're kind of wondering, hey, what's included in each of those three genomic tests, that's going to be on page two of our order form. To cover them briefly, we have our ULD at $34. That includes genomic enhanced DPDs and parentage. We have our LD at $48. That's genomic enhanced DPDs, parentage, OS, and MA. And then we have the HD, which has the genomic enhanced DPDs, parentage, OS, and MA. If you want a little bit more detail on those or want to know which test is going to best fit your outfit, please let us know. We'll go through it with you. Make sure we get lined, you get lined up with the right test for you. What does finish failed mean? So basically, it means that there was an issue with the sample. The lab tried two separate times to get DNA out of it, and, and they couldn't. Okay, there's multiple reasons for why the sample fails. It could be tattooing, it could be lotion, medicine got on the sample, the samples were wet and moldy, um, there's dirt, debris, chemicals, it can be a lot of things. Um, but basically, the takeaway point from this is that the lab tried to run it for two separate rounds, and they couldn't get DNA. So this is gonna require that you collect a new sample, pay and resubmit it to the association if you want results for that animal. What does excluded mean? Excluded means the comparison of the sample you submitted to the parent or parents did not match. So what you'll need to do is put it in writing via email, mail, or fax if there are some other Cyro or Jam options for us to try. Okay, this is called a retry. This is something that we can do in-house and generally it takes no more than a week, season permitting. Um, but what we basically need is for you to be very specific. We generally like you to reply back from the results shop that that excluded sample came through with that says, hey, can you please compare sample 101 to these extra sires? Okay, make sure you include registration numbers. The more specific, the easier it is, the quicker that we can get things done. Um, you don't necessarily need to resubmit a new sample, um, and it doesn't need to go back all the way through the testing process. Like I said, it generally takes about less than a week. Now, a different scenario is if you think there is a sample misidentification, please give us a call. This is going to take you down a different road, um, and we'll, we'll talk about those options with you specifically. So what do those statuses mean? I wanted to spend quite a bit of time on this slide because I know there's been a lot of issues with this in the past and I wanna to try to get to all the questions I've been asked about this. Our biggest one by far is the U status. So it's a genetic defect in the pedigree. So to kind of explain this from the ground up, um, we monitor defects differently depending on the mating of the calf. So let's say you have a calf that is a result of a natural mating. We're gonna monitor it two generations on each side of the pedigree, which is the sire and the dam. Okay, let's say, this is just a scenario, that the sire has OS in his pedigree, okay, four generations back. Okay, this natural calf isn't gonna get flagged because we're only looking two generations. Now, if you have an AI calf, and let's say it's the same sire, four generations back, it has OS. Okay, this calf is gonna go on hold. Okay, this is where I feel like a lot of confusion is because folks say, hey, I've registered natural calves out of this, this sire and now I have some AI calves and now they're all going on hold what's going on. This is the issue. Okay, with AI sired cows, we're going to go all the way back on the sire side of the pedigree in two generations on the damn side. So if that sire has OS, four generations, 13 generations, 10 generations, that calf's going to go on hold until we can either get DNA um, for the OS test for the sire or for the calf itself. We generally recommend people do like the source, so like the sire, because if there's any other AI calves out of him, they're also gonna go on hold and it's much cheaper to see if he's free of it first than to go and result to all the calves. Now, if he turned out to be a carrier, then you would have to test all those calves. Kind of a different story. If you run into that, give us a call. We'll go through that portion. Um, if you have ET animals, we're going to go all the way back on the sires and all the way back on the donor. Day. 
Okay, so if you are thinking about purchasing a sire or you are thinking about turning this dam into a donor dam, give us a call and let us check for those defects. Now, this is something you could also do yourself through ResPro in your reports. It's a genetic uh, defect suspect summary report, and it can pull that. Now, one thing about that report, it's, it's, gonna, re it's gonna pull that defect, whether or not that's a natural AI or ET cap. So going back to point one, if that sire has it four generations back and it shows up in that report, but it's a natural calf, that calf's not gonna get flagged. But as soon as it becomes an AI calf or an ET calf, it's gonna get flagged. So I hope that clears up some questions about the use status. If you have more, like I said, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're happy to take a look at your specific scenarios. B is an exclusion in the pedigree. Generally, this is gonna be the animal itself. It will usually say, damn not on file, sire excluded, or any variation of that. And for those kind of situations, to get those resolved, we need more options of who that calf could be out of. And that goes back to the retries. Um, so if you have that, you see that, make sure you're communicating with us to try to get that resolved because it only kind of builds as it goes along. So let, let's try to get that resolved for you quickly. Now, sometimes it is an exclusion, let's say, in the, the calf's sire's side of the pedigree. So maybe he himself is excluded. In that situation, we're still going to need options to figure out who he's out of. Z. Z is a lack of DNA on an animal that is required. So going back to all sires and all donor dams need to have DNA on file. Maybe you have this calf and the dam doesn't have DNA on file. That calf's going to go on Z until we get the DNA on the dam um, so it meets all the requirements. So if you see that, make sure that both parents have DNA on file for you. So this slide, I'm gonna cover quite a few things. Not only am I gonna talk about registering calves, but also some misconceptions that are kind of going out there um, about what is required to get calves at our status. So our requirements, like I said, are all sires, small donor dams must have DNA on file. Okay, so calves do not have to be tested in order to register, okay? We get quite a few questions on this and it is not a requirement for a calf to be registered or to our status. Unless there's a defect in the issue, like let's say it's dam is an OS carrier, then yes, you're gonna have to test that calf to see if it is an OS carrier or if it's free of it, okay? But it's not required in order to get them registered. So the next one, is, it's not required that any animal over one year old has to have DNA on file. A lot of folks, I don't know where this came from, uh, but have been, asking questions about this, and it is not a requirement. Okay, what is required that sires have DNA and donor dams? So for example, let's say you have this bull, and you know he's at R in the system, but he doesn't have any DNA on file. Well, he can be in the system like that forever, okay? When he becomes a sire and has a calf crop, that is when we're gonna require the DNA on him, okay? So that is the rule, um, all sires and all donors. So if you have a question about your animal, let me know. Um, but it is not required for any animal over one year old to have DNA on file. What I tell people is never assume that the animal has DNA on file. Please look it up in Reds Pro or give us a call to see if there's something pending for that animal. Um, just because you have a two-year-old bull does not mean that he has DNA on file, okay? Or that you purchase this animal from another breeder does not mean that that animal has DNA on file. Um, another rule of thumb that we try and tell people is once that bull enters your property, grab a sample on it. If you don't know if it has DNA, grab a sample. We run into a lot of cases where the bull broke his leg, got struck by lightning, you know, what have you. There's a lot of natural things that, that happen, um, but it's a much easier road to spend a $15 test to get that DNA on him. But if you're unsure about an animal, give us a call, shoot us an email, or look it up in Reds Pro. Um, we want to try to get you set up for the success. Um, so if you have questions, reach out. Some general rules of thumb. Um, if you're submitting blood cards to us, please don't put them in a Ziploc baggie. Um, this can cause mold to grow on your samples and render them unusable for testing. So if you're really worried about that, you could put them in separate envelopes if you want. Um, 
it's not something that you have to do by any means, but at least the envelope allows airflow to come in and out of it. Um, what we do see a lot of people do is they make sure that the samples are dry before they send them. They bundle them in order of the order form. They tie a rubber band around them to keep them in order. So when we receive them, we can just be like, boom, 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 boom. Yep, they're all here. Um, and then place it in a box for shipping just to give it a little bit more protection, make sure it all arrives here in one piece. This last slide um, has some really awesome new things we're rolling out. First, I'm gonna cover the Red Cow Rally program. This is a really great program. There are requirements for it, um, but basically it has to do with genotyping with females at a discounted rate. This is a really awesome program, guys. This is not something that's gonna be around forever. Um, and you can also get some extra rebates for some additional information. Check it out. It is going to be on our website for the Red Cow Rally, or you can either call Fallon at Extension 7 or shoot her an email. She's happy to answer those questions for you. She heads up that program. Please take advantage of it. It's a really awesome program. A new testing option we're rolling out as we speak is our LD Bundle. So this is the LD panel, again, that has a genomic enhanced EPDs, parentage, OS, and MA testing. But now it's going to have the four other defects, CA, AM, DD, and MH, for $95, okay? So normally that's a $48 test. And then if you wanted to add the four defects, I mean, we're well over $100. So this is going to be a really nice bundle. The LD panel is a great middle of the road. It's a great bang for your buck. And now you're going to have all six defects in there that we monitor for 95 bucks. So if you're interested in that, let us know. We're still working out the details as far as getting it on the order form. So if you're interested, give us a call. We'll figure out a way to make sure you're taking advantage of this. Because um, it is a really great test. It's going to set you up for a really great future. Um, but if you have questions on it, give us a call. I hope you guys found this super informative. I hope you're all weathering the storm right now. What's going on everywhere? All right. If you have more questions or you want to see a new YouTube video about a particular subject, please feel free to reach out to us. We want to keep helping you get educated on all the other options that are out there for you and answer all those questions that have been coming in. So I hope, again, you found this super informative, and I appreciate you guys listening. Thanks for your time.